All set. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'd like to call to order the uh, October 13th, 2022 Board of Directors meetings for the Norwalk Public Library. Um, present, uh, we have um, Alex Knopp, Ralph Bloom, Patsy Brescia, Janie Williams, um, we see uh, Cheryl from Telesco on, um, and, and as our guests, we have Cindy Leahy and Amanda Cleveland. Not present are Sharon Benante, Laurel Peterson, Mary Mann, and Tom Cullen. Um, so uh, what, has everyone had a chance to read the September 8th meeting minutes? And um, are there any changes or would somebody like to move to accept the minutes? Gobble's approval. No second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's um, unanimous. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any uh, additions to the agenda? Uh, modifications. Cheryl, do you want to maybe at this point say that you're going to? Okay, so um, with the chair's permission, uh, we, we are going to go out of order and have um, any questions or, or a presentation uh, from Amanda Cleveland from Silver Precious Selly about the next steps for the um, Sono renovation project. Amanda, thank you very much for being here. You've been so busy. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> So you're on. Oh, I'm on. OK. Um, yeah. So Sherelle and I met with Alan Lowe and Sharon Connors um, just to kind of talk about the next step in the bidding process for the South Norwalk Library project. Um, our firm is currently at the tail end of construction documents. Um, so I think all we have is a couple of minor finishes uh, to confirm with the committee and then we'll be able to button up our documents for bid. Um, our primary reason for talking with Sharon and Alan is just to make sure that we have all the proper documentation ready to go um, and we understand the process. Um, so our next steps right now, so the goal I believe is to put this project out to bid um, or at least have it ready to go by the end of this month. Um, and Sharon just noted to us that if that's our goal is to get out as soon as possible, we need to order wage rates um, from the state, or from the state um, and have those included in the bid package. And she did let us know that the state is currently taxed um, and taking a long time to turn those wage rates around. So it can be um, two weeks, three weeks uh, before we actually get those. And we do have to have them in hand and included in our project manual before we go out to bid. So um, we did get a checklist from Sharon as to what we need to do. Um, so I'm probably going to, knowing that we're going to try for the end of this month, is put the order in for those wage rates, knowing that it's probably going to be the first or second week of November before we have them in hand. Um, Alan reminded us that we do have to go for committee approval um, once the bids come in. Um, so we understand that the funding is already granted, but we do have to go back to the committee to tell them how we're spending those dollars and get our bid award recommendation in front of them for them to sign off on. Um, so if everything goes according to plan, and if we have enough time, uh, they meet the first Wednesday of every month, uh, which means we're really looking at uh, the first week of December, getting those documents to them for approval. And Alan let us know that you know they are running a little behind themselves. Um, so it is likely going to be a January um, signature or sign off on that contract for us to be able to engage the contractor. Um, so we're going to um, pull all the documents together, make sure that we have everything that the city needs in order for us to do a competitive bid. And then um, if everything plays out appropriately, I think we're targeting construction right around the March, April, May timeframe, um, presuming that the contractors can meet that request. Uh, because that is the slowest time at the library and the most ideal time um, for them to uh, proceed with construction. Um, so I know Sherelle is also working behind the scenes to get some quotations on moving furniture and stacks out of the library so that we can carpet below the stacks. Um, so all these parts and pieces are kind of moving and we're, we're getting very close to having something out on the street for a bit. 
And that's kind of everything in a nutshell. Um, and, I, and just uh, kind of moving back a little bit, we had uh, two committee meetings um, uh, since our last meeting and in which we kind of buttoned up all the final, um, final design elements, so. Correct. Which is um, in your packet. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at, at that. And I think I sent one around before as well. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, a, a question. Uh, the committee, uh, Amanda, you mentioned committee, but for the record, uh, you didn't say which committee that is. So, and, and Mona mentioned the same word and it's a different committee. So we need to, cla we need to clarify. It's, it's, it's the land it's use plan. Committee. Yeah, right. Okay. I, that's just for the record. Um, and and the one, we still have the carpet selection outstanding. Correct. Is that well, correct? That's correct. Okay. Carpet selection and I believe also lighting. Okay. It, I think we agree on the lighting. I think it was just the lighting um, near the stations, the individual computer Correct. stations. Yeah. Correct. So I, I believe Brianna may have sent those over, but I didn't get a chance to look fully through her last email. But if she has not, it will definitely be in your inbox for tomorrow. Um, and then we can take questions uh, and if you like it or pivot in another direction. Sounds good. And I think Amanda, one of the things that you were talking about was um, the expense, the moving expenses and um, whether that would be included in the budget or not included in the budget for this project. So could you talk a little bit about that? Because that I think, as a board, if it is not included in the budget as a board, we would need to determine, you know, how how to take care of the moving expenses. Yeah, correct. Right now, it was not included in the budget that we've put together, and it's not included in the funds that Sherelle has secured. So that was why I was getting the um, the quotes, and right. not now getting it. Well, I, why wouldn't they be included? Uh, to be honest with you, it was not part of the scope of work, and I wasn't sure uh, towards the beginning of the project what the library or what the town was going to handle. As we got further towards the end of construction documents, it became clear that it really was a scope that was larger than what likely the city could handle on their own, um, and that's why we've said we need to go out for bids. Now, that's not to say that when we get the estimates back from the contractor, Maybe we'll get really lucky and they'll be below what we have estimated. And maybe some of those dollars can go towards that. But in terms of all of the line item budget that we've provided, uh, storage and moving costs for those stacks were not included. Well, so when you say the city, is it more than the city could do, do you mean it was anticipated that city employees would make these moves? Correct. So it was not anticipated or not at least discussed whether or not the library was going to try and phase this construction work. In other words, close a portion of the floor and try and move some things on mobile carts out of the way. Um, it was not discussed whether or not they were gonna carpet below the stacks or just carpet up to them. And I think in our discussions, we, we determined that it was sort of short-sighted to carpet up to the stacks and leave them in place during construction because if 10, 15 years down the road, you decide that you need to shift for whatever reason, um, you know, you don't have material underneath those stacks to make that shift. Um, so that's when we kind of raised our hand and said, well, we really need to get a quote to see what it would take to move those stacks. Because it can be somewhat easy or it can be quite labor intensive in terms of, you know, loading them on temporary shelves, wrapping them, whether or not they move on site or they move off site, um, depending on what the library's goals are for keeping those volumes accessible during construction that's really going to determine what the overall cost would be. Well, it seems to me that I agree about carpeting under the shelves, I think is a, is a worthy goal. Um, if more funds are needed because the city cannot do it, and I don't know who provided such an estimate, then since we're talking about the capital budget, we should add a supplemental uh, increase in the capital funds for the project to Make sure that happens. Now, with that, um, with that, the timing doesn't seem right because the money wouldn't 
we, the job is going to be done before the beginning of the next fiscal year? Well, we can always ask for a supplemental increase in the yeah. uh, current fiscal current. year. Yeah, yes, that's, and I would agree. I think that's, we should obviously do that yeah. if necessary. Well, it sounds like, so do I understand that you'll be preparing an estimate first of whether or not all of the shelves and books can be phased so that the <clears throat> during construction, the move expenses and work uh, will be less, or if not, you'll be preparing an estimate for the cost of removal, uh, full removal during construction. Yeah, we were thinking that we might have like the best sellers, um, I'm sorry, the new books, maybe have those in the auditorium so that the adults don't lose total service. Um, yeah, and then I guess we would we would store the other books. Well, I think we need a, you know, we have two alternatives and I think we need to cost both of them out. For sure. And so that we know going forward in case one doesn't pan out, we can, you know, ask the city for uh, additional funds for the other. I think the two things you should consider is um, storage on site. Um, is that feasible? Um, it obviously takes away the function of your upstairs auditorium, the more square footage that stores your volume, um, but you're saving on an off site facility storage or um, even the risk of storing on a container on site. Um, containers are wonderfully accessible and large, um, but I have no guarantee or you have no guarantee that they are weather tight. Um, and I hate to see that volumes get damaged. So usually most people opt for offsite storage and that's obviously costly. Um, the good news is the duration of your construction isn't projected to be several months, it's, it's a couple of months. Um, so I think looking at getting the quote to say, what would it cost me to just take these and move these upstairs? And what would it cost for me to take these and move them offsite? And then you can evaluate what's the better value based on how much demand does your auditorium get. Are you assuming that the city could move the books to the auditorium or we would need to hire a move outside moving firm to, as part of your project to do that? The quote Sherelle is getting is from an outside firm. <clears throat> is there, uh, can I ask a question? The, the room, I don't know what you call it, but the small room at the bottom of the stairs, could uh, boxed books be stored in that room? It's too small. It's probably, well, it's eight by, I think it's probably eight by are, 10. Are you talking about the activity room? No, no, room? no, no. When you first come in uh, on the left. Yeah. The room that, on that, the... So that room, I mean, the vestibule, we might be able to, but I don't think that we will be able to get all of the books. And then there's. No, the... but yeah, but some of them oh, and the rest go upstairs. But if they're boxed, they can be stacked rather than on shelves. Sure, what did you get? Yeah. Yeah. That's an option we should look at. For sure. And what did you get the quotes for and how much were they? Um, they have not come back because the oh. one group was on um, on vacation and others they have to come and look and assess. So within that time that we had it last week, they one person's on vacation and they said they, they got it, but as soon as they got back, they would they would come out. So why don't at the next meeting we have a like a full plan or some options, um, you know, with some pricing uh, around around the move and you know some of the timing and the cost and and then you know get ready to submit a, a capital request from the city. So yeah, I just want to make sure that in the end we're not presented with a tight deadline to have the foundation fund this essential part of a construction plan that should have been anticipated makes sense so so let me just say this if the city does not fund um you know the, this expense then what would happen well, the city is a wash of money at the moment from the feds and the state and funding numerous projects left and right. I don't know what the cost will be, so I don't know how to answer that question. 
but uh, the city is giving out a lot of grants to nonprofits. I mean, the foundation is a nonprofit. Maybe we get a city grant, but this is an essential part of the project should have been included. And the city, if they've committed to doing the project as they have, this is an essential part of it. Any other okay. questions for Amanda? I'm sorry? Any, and I was asking if there were any other questions for you. Oh. Yeah, Amanda, I was just kind of curious about the, um, uh, I assume they're prevailing wage rates that you're talking about. Right. Um, since, since the city is doing so much construction now, especially on schools, is there any, and Alan Lowe was involved, I mean, I assume he would have thought of it. Is there any fungibility of the quotes that is uh, prevailing wage rates on some of the school buildings or facilities? How different can that be from a prevailing wage rate on a library reconstruction, unless there are highly specialized kinds of wage rates? I don't really feel that they're all that different because the wage rates, um, when you receive them, it lists out all the different trades and what the currently hourly rate is for all of those trades. Um, yeah. So it's really just a snapshot in time when they send it to you of what the, the wage rates are at that time. And they typically yeah. expire, I believe it's two weeks after receipt. I see. I didn't realize it was that uh, quick, a lifespan Correct. for, I see. Yeah, so that's why when you're ready to go out to bid, you get them in hand and you go so that you're not having them expire during your bid process. I see. Well, given I know some of the unavoidable uncertainties of the construction process and put it in together bid documents, maybe, you know, uh, if the city is continuously seeking wage rates pretty close to the time you're ready, maybe there's a way to shorten the waiting period, uh, I would think. Correct. I think it's worth asking. Yeah. yeah, and we're working very closely with Sharon. Um, she's got the whole process down. So we're Good. pretty much saying, how high do you want us to jump? <laughs> That's great. Yep. So it sounds like some next steps are to approach the city. Um, and for this, for this, um, and then to get all the quotes in. <laughs> For the moving so we have well first to get the quotes in and then approach the city so and we should do that before the next meeting so is there anything else on that well thank you amanda all right thank you everyone we appreciate you have a good day. yeah I hope you all had a chance to look at the design. It really is something special. And I think it's going to be a huge um, improvement um, to the, the Sonoma Library. So very, it, it will be very inviting space, so. All right, have a great night, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Cindy. So, yeah. There she is. I lost her for a minute. Oh, no, I'm here. Okay, let me let me share my screen first. So Cindy is going, Sharon is not here. Sharon was the person who really wanted to see um, the outdoor furniture, but um, she, at least she can watch it, you know, on, on the film. Okay. So back in. Can you see Cindy's screen? Can everyone see it? Yeah. I can, yeah. <clears throat> Great. Great. So um, back back in the heat of summer, back in August, Sherelle asked us to look into outdoor furniture for the library. So Vicki Otis and I got together and we put this together after uh, discussing a lot about outdoor furniture, but I'm just historically library buildings have um, historically included outdoor spaces and often to underscore the building significance and also to contribute to the beauty of place. So we currently have the Adirondack chairs on the lawn and they've been very popular during the summer months and in the past the small tables and chairs arranged on the Mott Avenue Plaza. But in the past our and in the past our outdoor concerts flourished in that area. The benches in that area are weather beaten and need to be replaced. Our Wi-Fi 
access extends around the exterior of the building and is often used during the summer months. In addition, we now have our solar charging station. Libraries of all scales and in all climates can use the outdoor spaces to fulfill their missions and effectively serve the communities. By turning the library inside out, the libraries can increase their available real estate for providing services and to add a host of benefits for patrons. So um, providing safe, attractive exterior spaces for staff and visitors extends the focus on wellness. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is um, urban locations can encourage walking by establishing themselves on the walking tours. So the library will be partnering in the next spring in April with the health department in a history walk and it'll begin at the library. But what do we need before we get the furniture? We need to adjust the landscaping on the front lawn. We need to look at insect issues in the grassy area. Um, we get a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of, and, and of course, bees and things to review lighting needs and to address the sound issues from the traffic. Um, one of the other things, students of all ages have been interested in our Studio One Makerspace and love to create projects and um, that incorporate analog and digital making, but the maker movement also has brought new reasons to be outside because some activities can be messy, others require a lot of space and rely on, on nature's resources to succeed. The library can become a hub for creative activities inside and outside. Mm -hmm. By dedicating some space and providing access to power, it increases space to the community. Libraries can put sidewalks and patios to use as, as we've done in the past. And the visibility to passersby increases interest in the library and its programs and helps reinforce the institution. So the area could be used for independent patron meetups, casual chatting in pairs and foursomes, scheduled programs for adults, scheduled programs for children, private tutoring sessions, one-on-one -on -one computer tutor on laptop devices or devices while using the Wi-Fi, and independent use of library Wi-Fi. So what are we looking for? seatings and tables for people to use for small gatherings and studying. Um, a standard picnic style bench isn't always easy for elderly people, the disabled or, or people that are heavy set. Lighting for evening sessions, umbrellas over the tables for shade and protection from light rain. Se a, sep a separate issue would be a large tent and flooring for outdoor programming and sides of the tent to block out the traffic noise. So one of the things we looked at was at the Ridgefield Li Public Library where they have, um, as you can see, picnic tables with umbrellas on their patio. And um, these tables cost between 12 to $1,300 and umbrellas are an additional 199. Three tables and umbrellas would be approximately $4,500 and provide seating for up to 18 people. Hey, so Cindy? Michelle had mentioned to us that um, someone on the board had, had asked about having wood furniture. Hey, Cindy? So, yes. I'm sorry, I think someone... someone yeah, Cindy, oh, sorry. That's okay, see, this is Alex. Can you go back on that, uh, sure. I forget, Wilton or Ridgefield? You had like two slides ago. Well, I'm going ahead, I've got to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you said you had an issue there about, uh, to discuss about lighting, uh, which I'm... Um, kind of uncertain about it. I couldn't see, is there lighting under these umbrellas or these just daytime use? No, no this is just daytime use here. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. We would have to address it. The lighting issue would be if we did programming on the, on the, put tables on the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, we looked into, we looked at what we could find in wood there's, and we found this rectangular 118 inch expend, extendable table. It's a grand veranda picnic teak set. It's $6,978. It's 100% grade A plantation teak and is a lifetime warranty. And, and ever since I looked at this and we put this in here, every time I go on Facebook, I get items from this <laughs> company. <laughs> But um, some of the other items that we were looking at and had discussed were if we had a large tent for large, larger programs, um, would it be portable? Who would set it up? 20 by 20 tent holds up to 40 people. It costs nearly $4,000, but it would help with noise from the street. 
and it's a covered area in case of light rain. And then because the ground is uneven, we thought there'd be there are safety issues. There's um, to make it more comfortable, we looked into outdoor flooring that could be portable to be put out when the tent was up. And um, it's for 264 square feet, it's about 1310. So we had we had this brought to our attention more questions. How permanent is the furniture? Will it be up all year round or is it portable? Uh, who will be setting it up if it's portable? Where will it be stored, especially a tent, and a tent that size and how, where we, could we store it? What is the budget for purchasing the furniture and equipment? And then um, would we allow outside groups to book the area and use it as additional, similar to what our meeting room use? And are there restrictions? Will it be that area be designated, particularly when it's on the front lawn as a snow smoking area, because currently we have no smoking near the front and rear entrance but people tend to go to the front lawn and smoke, the few people that do. We did attach to the, um, to the deck some of the items and the companies they came from so that um, we, you could find out more information. And if there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, I, I have a question. Uh, did you happen to do any site layout where potentially you would put these tables and the tent? We looked at, we looked at the front lawn and a lot of it has to do with the lawn itself. If we were going to put it on the front lawn and the uneven of the um, area, the grassy area. So we really haven't done a complete layout. Okay. Did you look at the space between um, the library and the district building and the, the back entrance there on that lawn? We have we have looked at, at that area and that it's not really big enough to put much, much furniture there. And the tent wouldn't fit there? It be really, really small and yeah. really thin. No, not really, yeah. Well, I think that is one next step that we, you know, we position, um, you know, have some rough ideas of uh, where we could put specific things. And I think this would be a good item for us to consider to put in next year's capital budget request with the city. I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I really like the the Ridgefield Library um, tables mm -hmm. and the umbrellas. Mm -hmm. They seem very sturdy, weatherproof. Um, you know, the umbrellas in, um, in the summer. And um, I, you know, for what doesn't seem, I don't know, I mean, they don't seem so expensive, but yet they would, I feel like they would have a big impact in terms of the inviting, like, you know, being inviting to people to kind of sit around. But the other, that's, that's one thing. And then the second thing is, you know, I'm being very optimistic, but, um, you know, when we, when we, redesign our lot do a big redesign of our library i think we should um keep you know we should keep that in mind because we don't want to we want we don't want to you know overdo it because you know that that we should you know we should do something that's like manageable right now with an eye to the future of like really getting into some of the those ideas that you talked about early um about the importance of that indoor outdoor space and you know moving you know especially with you know the world yeah. we're living in right now so i have a couple more comments uh, the richfield uh, model i'm familiar with that product and um it's it's there's some real advantages to it it's it's not movable easily you know for anybody to take a piece and move it off site um, it's easy, they're easy to keep clean and they're very sturdy. And so that it's easy to get on them and off of them uh, for people that are challenged in some ways. So um, they're, they're, very, they're very sturdy. They've been very happy with them at the Ridgefield Library. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're used in a lot of outdoor restaurants, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, this is Alex. Um, you know, I'm not in favor of the tent. 
And I hope that we can sort of almost make a decision about it sooner rather than later so that Cindy and Vicky or whoever she works with can do some positioning of things without wasting time on the tent. I mean, I think our idea of outdoor furniture is to supplement what we have now rather than to move library programs that we now do indoors to move them outdoors mm -hmm. uh, in a way that substitutes one for the other. Um, that we're looking for the kind of, you know, small group or individual usage that uh, Sydney seemed to, I don't know, highlight in those first couple of slides. To me, the 10 is overkill. And, uh, you know, is I think beyond what we can functionally utilize right now. So I would be in favor of her citing out the first couple of options. I like the Richfield things too. And for the reasons that Patsy mentioned. And I think Cindy, in one of them, the, there was a concern about elderly or people who are, you know, a little overweight trying to get up from a bench style seating. Mm. Um, and I know that can be hard. So I like that there were arms on some of the chairs, you know, uh, and the, and the rich field thing and the other. So I don't know if there's a consensus about not doing the tent. Um, I certainly would favor that and have you, you know, come back with some sample, um, you know, uh, location ideas for the other stuff. If nobody else has a comment, I, I agree with with um, Alex on the tent issue. I, I I don't think we're ready to take something on like that. And if and when we are successful in getting our addition, you know, that had been part of the discussion for that. And then the issue is t taking them down and storing them without damaging. And that takes... Um, concerted uh, focus from anybody, staff or whoever's gonna be doing that. And I don't know where you would plan to store it, but I think we should pass on that for now also. So it sounds good. So um, are we all kind of in favor of pursuing a couple of those Richfield type benches and we have some cost on that and um, and maybe putting it into the capital budget. Is that what I'm hearing? I mean, it's a possibility, I, but you're going to need a layout of where they're going to go. So okay. I don't know who so maybe, deals yeah. with that. Um, so the issue, too, is I did have Neil um, of Guardian come by and the the landscaping for that lawn is, is very expensive. Um, the landscaping as well as soundproofing. So I'm not sure if that's where we want to go now or if that's something we want to wait for the um, for our renovation. Because in order to put anything on that lawn, it, it needs to be, um, it, it needs some work. Yeah, it's definitely. not, yeah. It's not flat, is it? It's like, is it flat? No, it's not. It's, it's, and that no, be it's, it's yeah. and there's, there are tree roots and things like that, yeah. And it's just told, it's very uneven. Mm -hmm. So my thought is if we're gonna do it, it needs to go in the front, maybe where those rotted, where the rotted wood is, um, somewhere yeah. there. But I think right now, um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty costly um, to fix the front lawn. Well, we certainly don't need a soundproof, you know, with a couple of chairs. I mean, if Cindy said that the Adirondack chairs are popular now, you know, I think extending that kind of, almost rustic use is feasible. Um, I, I certainly don't need to soundproof it. I don't need whether or not, I don't know whether it'd have to be some modest landscaping to accommodate, you know, four or six more outdoor chairs, but you know, I yeah. think that would be a nice way to start it. I think Vicky- Do we, do we have any for kids out there? The that's what I was gonna here? say. Vicki was thinking about, um, she was thinking soundproofing so that she could do story time outside, but I just, from yeah. if I can remember Neil's conversation, I think he said even if they put up a barrier, it's not gonna be just because of where the street is and where the, yeah. the yeah. lawn is, it's not gonna 
give the sound movement that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. It might be nice for parents to hang out with their kids out oh, there. For sure. Yeah. I have one comment about the uh, area. When COVID started, we started using the Belmont Avenue doorway and people were allowed to walk across the room. And when they did, all the children came up. I can't a, hear you, Ralph. Can you hear me now? A little better. All right. Um, during the summer, during COVID, um, you'll have to excuse me. When I had the accident, I have a bit loose hair. That's better. <laughs> um, we had a problem with people stepping over the roots of the trees on the lawn. It's very uneven. And very. one of the things that might be considered would be to decide what kind of table and should the tables be excuse me, bolted down because they're, they're very feelable. And one of the things we might consider is that eventually we may be rebuilding the stairs to the 1903 original front entrance. And the area beneath those stairs might be enough space to store the outdoor furniture. Um, but we might consider a cement pad uh, to even out the front area because right now it's very, very tricky. We had people, Actually, they couldn't see it in the snow. And they were having a problem with it. <coughs> but um, we might want to consider the fact this is more involved than we think. Uh, I would get a, a chance to see how many tables are actually going to sit. How many people, how large a program will be on there, out there. It may be we have to put um, a cement pad so that we have an even area. Right now, if you were to use it, you're going to write it with a muddy section. It would be very, very, very poor service. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think there's another thing that we always have to consider. Uh, looking into the future and, and the timing element of uh, getting a, a new addition and major work done is minimally in the best of circumstances, three years out, probably more four or five as construction projects go. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in the meantime, you know, we should focus on what we can do for the next two or three years to add add to our service and and not just put it off until we have an addition. So yeah. that should be part of our plan. What what can we do realistically now? Do we have and, enough room at the front entrance for a few tables? Can. What did you say, Ralph? Do, excuse me. Do we have enough room at the front entrance where we have a terrace? Yeah. And we get a pair of tables in the front with umbrellas. The picture in Ridgefield shows a flat surface. And yeah, I, I, that's what my assumption was when you, for, when I first saw that, that they would not be out on the grass, that they would be in the front, uh, kind of plaza area. Am I, is that correct, Cindy? Or yes, that okay. we thought of that. Yes. And how many do you, did you figure how many of those units you could get two or three? Probably, you probably could hold two or three, uh, probably three would fit nice. out there so that oh, so that's again why we need to get uh you know a diagram we need to measure and yeah yeah could we could we get something like that um you know so we could possibly include it in the capital budget or depending on the price i mean i don't know how people feel about a foundation um expense on that because it's really not like you know it's under ten thousand would be under ten thousand mm -hmm. And it would be well, very visible and very, um, I think, a nice thing too. So, so Cindy, would you feel comfortable doing that, putting kind of showing it around, or is there someone you would need to work with? Oh, uh, with Sherelle and with Vicky, sure. Okay. And I, I think I have Neil's um, thing somewhere too because we thought about this once before. Um, so yeah, yeah, with Neil, right? That would be a, a great person to do this with too, because he's yes, yeah. There, there has to be an existing site plan uh, available 
for the for the library and it might be actually in um our original wish presentation a couple of years ago you know for future expansion mm -hmm. so that you can use that um as your base document that's good okay it sounds like we have some next steps on that yeah. so it sounds like it was a lot of work and, and thorough. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, very much so. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. Um, okay, so, um, Moira, do you want to, um, should we just skip the capital until next time? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. But, but the focus of our walkthrough on October 29th is to think in terms of some short-term capital budgets. Uh, that's right, items. yeah. I was gonna make sure I mentioned that. Um, okay. When we talk, so, so should we just go through the rest of the library director's report and end with my report? No, um, I'm sorry, it's Alex. Can I ask a question here? Sure. So when the capital budget discussion comes up next month, could it be in some form that's <clears throat> I know a little more comprehensible with like a list of items? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that we could discuss. Yeah, sure. This was just an inter introductory type of thing. Yeah, I, no, I'm not I'm not being critical of it. I'm just saying No, no, I understand. It, okay. Yeah. But at the same time, we have a timing thing with the capital budget. We have to get something put together, I think, by late November. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure of that, but we don't have a lot of time to get prepared to for our ask. And I don't know where you are with the need for the truck that we didn't get last year. Right. But, I have all you know. of, so the truck. Um, so I have the, the capital as well as so the things that we didn't get last year are going to go back in whether it's capital or operated. Okay, have you been given notice from the city Not as yet. to when to get your budget in? <clears throat> Not yet. That's surprising, okay. So well, yeah, we don't have a lot of time. time. Yeah, it's a we don't, yeah. around this time. Yeah. So um, that's point well taken, Alex, and uh, we'll, work, you know, we'll work together to kind of really have it um, our, kind of list for the capital budget to discuss for the November meeting. Um, do you wanna go through the rest of your report, um, Sherelle? And then I'll just, we can just close with um, my two things. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, so I have the outdoor. Um, so the kiosks um, were installed. So, and they look really, really, really nice. So we're really, Great. really happy with them. Yeah, they, they look really nice. Um, we tested them, um, the process is very smooth. So um, yeah, so if you come to either library, you'll be able to see the kiosk, um, you know, use your card and, and, and check out a, um, a laptop. Great. Yeah, it, it, they, they look really nice. Um, so we have the Sono next steps. Um, the Greater Norwalk Literacy Volunteers, um, that capital project was improved, approved in the amount of 98,000. So um, the project got stalled due to COVID, but Gill and Gill, you know, they've given us um, an estimate for two different, um, two different designs. The, the, the basic premise is basically to have another um, uh, classroom in there and not so much office space. And so, you know, they're, once we approve the designs and we'll be ready, you know, which one we want to use, we'll be ready for next steps. So Cheryl, is that money like, like, is it there waiting for us to use? It is. Okay. And, and sorry. And yeah. when, when do we, do we look at anything or who's making oh, I, that yeah, decision? I, we, we all can. So I sent the, the design um, there's two different options for yeah. the design. So maybe and, and when we're there on the, on the 29th, we can 
have those plans and 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 then feel the space you know okay. so that we get a better idea and make for a decision sure. for sure would that be yeah you know. i think that's a great idea i mean and, and as i understand the goal is to create uh, like there are two workspaces in there now and the, the goal was to create another workspace right for okay. clients in there and um okay and and maybe you can just tell the rest of the board about like what's happening with GNLV in terms of like getting people back after COVID. So um, just so you know, uh, we we underwent a, a process in order to be able to be a testing site um, online, and um, I'm very happy with what it was quick and well it wasn't quick but. Um, Anyway, so so we're still doing it online. The issue is some of the the students enjoy being online because they don't have to worry about transportation and they don't have to worry about childcare. Um, there's sort of a split as to uh, just some things that I've I've heard from tutors. Um, some of them really love online. Some of them are dying to get back in person. So Shelly will be polling everyone just to see you know where they are. Um, I think the biggest issue may be the tutors who want to um, go back in person and the two, um, the students who may not. So once she finishes her poll, I will, um, I'll know a little bit more. I do plan to, when, um, when I put together our needs for staffing, um, I want, Cindy and I discussed, um, this is another topic, we discussed passports and we thought we would just, you know, hire past someone to do passports, but um, by appointment only and for both buildings. And then I'll be going out for passport agents and also for um, literacy volunteers to man the office as well, part-time. Okay. And just, you know, really looking at some redesign, like not just in this area, although we have a close relationship with the state, but looking at other places, even just looking at um, the changes in textbooks and how, um, you know, globally, how Literacy Volunteers is um, operating. So that's what I'm looking at right now and Shelly's looking at. So um, hopefully we'll have a plan, I would say maybe three or four months out when we can put everything together. Is it possible to do the program in a hybrid, uh, both in person and on Zoom? Is that is that possible physically to do that? I mean, they could try. I know hybrid um, for the most part. Once we, you know, once the materials are delivered, will be in the auditorium. What they could do um, is like I've heard some people say it just doesn't work and some people do, but they could also do it via Zoom because it's small group. It's no more than four people. So they could also have, um, um, you know, maybe a laptop inside. They can use the kiosk and get a laptop and, you know, maybe have the, the ones who, you know, want to be offsite, you know, we can do it that way. So there, that's the possibility. I'll talk a little bit more because Shelly knows the tutors and she really knows the students um, intimately. So I can find out if that's something that she thinks can be an option. And we'll we we can definitely really look at the space on the when we go in um, together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so Wall Street, I'm really excited that we will hold, we'll be a host site for the unveiling of the Wall Street plan on uh, November 14th from 5.30 until 8. So it'll be after hours at our main library. So that will just be the sole focus. You know, we won't have to compete with patrons or room bookings. Um, you know, in the event there, there are breakout sessions. So everyone mark your calendar, November 14th, main mm -hmm. library, 5.30 to 8. That's good. We're the anchor of the Wall, of the wall Street plan. So it's good yeah. that it's happening at, at the library. Yep. And then staff updates. 
our branch manager will be beginning on Saturday. So very excited about that. That's uh, the South uh, Norwalk um, Library? For the branch manager, correct. <clears throat> we will begin on Saturday, and I cannot wait. Um, and then you can say we're gonna now we're closing. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, well, we'll stay open. Our, our, no, no, our, I know that, but I'm just <laughs> no. But yeah. you know, Opa, Opa Brown used to tease me because when I started, that's when they yeah. did the renovation. They say, see, you when as soon as you started, they closed the library. He used to tease me about that all the time. So, but I, yeah. I'm really excited and looking forward to what she will bring. Um, you know, and her specialty. Um, we got word today that Olimbi Hoha will be beginning, and I'm really excited because of, she has um, Head Start experience, so she really knows, you know, children, and um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I do have Owen. Owen, if you want to just kind of peek on screen, he's here with me tonight. Oh, so hi, hi uh, Owen. Hi. Owen, <laughs> Owen Nasworthy. That's not that right. Yeah, Welcome. Bob. Yeah. So um, he's our IT tech person. Um, the city absolutely loves him. They called me and said he's a keeper um, as far as his knowledge and just his demeanor. And so um, he has experience like in back office. Well, you know what? You can tell about yourself. <laughs> no, I've been in IT for the past. Yeah. Been in IT for the past uh, 20 years. Um, so I've had quite a bit of experience in, uh, experience working in the corporate environment. So um, I think I, I, I'll do well here. I'll do my best to make sure that I am um, doing my best to make sure that whatever issues are here that I'm, I'm hearing about right now, I'm able to address those issues. Um, and it's a great team. So far on the city side, the guys are great. Um, so I know that I'm really going to have, I, I need to enjoy my time here. And nice well, to meet you. Good welcome, work. welcome, Owen. Thank welcome. you. Thank welcome you. Welcome to the team. <laughs> Thank you. So he was nice enough to hang out with me tonight. Um, That's good. And, yeah, and will, will our new uh, person for South Norwalk be attending the, um, the board meetings in the um, future? They can. I think if we do that, like all of them, you know, we'll have them. No, 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 no. As you were part of the the board meetings in your previous position, will the new high assistant director? She's um, branch manager, so okay. she's going to be on par with the others. Okay. Okay. All right. And so course, that's but not. Yeah, I would love to invite her if we have time. Like you know, just for the, if she can introduce herself. The same yes, way that would be, that would be we great. actually do that in November. Yeah. I think that would be great yeah. if you yeah. have that yeah. on the agenda. Yeah. Happy to, very happy to. Uh, let's see. We have um, a full time staff member who replaced um, our outgoing custodian, um, John Sabia, who comes. He's been with the city for seven years. He works in Parks and Rec, um, as well as I think DPW. Um, so, you know, he's already helped us out. Like we were, um, you know, sending things, like if we were mowing the lawn or raking leaves, um, um, he's done, you know, a little bit of outside work. And he said, we don't have to take this stuff in the van. We can just call the city and they'll pick it up. So he's already sort of helping us with his connection. Um, he's learning, he's, he learned the um, South Norwalk Library his first week and tomorrow will be his first day over at the main library. So part of the efficiency study was to rotate staff. So uh, or not or just to make it a system. And so that's what I'm doing with the custodians. So, um, we have a wonderful, I'm really happy with um, the custodial team. We have um, Otis Sweet, um, who's also he's one of the part-timers and he comes to us with um, extensive experience. The family had a cleaning service. Um, so he really knows what he's doing. He takes care of the buildings, the grounds, um, very proactive. Um, so they've all had a chance to meet um, Matt, um, who's also phenomenal. So it's it, it's it's a nice team, and I'm really happy with 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 the way it's shaping up. Sure. 
with, with the new services coming in and new personnel, um, with with Colin going, um, I, I is there a guarantee as to who I'm going to have on Saturday morning to put the tables up for the book sale? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we 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 know. So all of all of the men are very capable. So all of them are are probably equally capable. So okay, um, someone will definitely be assigned. So Cindy like made her request. She has some things. So any requests you have, you can go through me. And I'll make sure, like, you know, like on days that there may be just one person. I know for her, I think it's her indie author event. They're only meeting for two hours on Saturday. It's just to set the tables up. And that's roughly between 10 and 12. They need to do the bathrooms all before that. But it's just the two hours. And then we have all the volunteers we need to actually bring the books up on Saturday. So we're going to kind of throw. We've waited three, almost three years to do this sale. For sure. We'll make sure it's all taken care of. Okay. I'll make sure I have two guys there for you. All right. Thank you. you. Oh, anytime, for sure. Um, let's see. So just quickly, uh, weekends and evenings, we're, we're there. You know, we start Sundays, this Sunday, and um, Sono Mondays. Um, I'm Hoping we can start so no Mondays if, if personnel, I have one other person, a personnel lets me know that that person's been approved. But um, so Mondays and Tuesdays will be the late night at Sono until eight rather than seven. And then Wednesdays and Thursdays at the main um, from 10 to 11. Yeah, so, I saw some nice social media around that. So that was good too. Yeah. And um, we're looking to put sandwich boards outside of each and to get something up, hopefully, in, in, um, in the papers, too, as, along with our kiosk. Yeah. And Nancy and Norwalk, too. Like, uh, they'll do an update, too. Um, and I think we do. The one thing that I think you skipped over was the, uh, the Friday holidays. So if you want, because so that, that I think you yep. probably vote on. So that's the last part. So, um, this year, uh, New Year's and Christmas Day actually fall on Sundays. So um, the city will be observing, um, I believe, on Monday. So we were, um, our ask is to close um, the library on Saturday for New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve. That's right. the the agenda The agenda says Fridays, so um, it it's Friday Saturday. It's Saturdays. Because the agenda Saturday. says Fridays. Really? Yes. It, yeah, it may have been. Oh, I think I don't know. The updated agenda should have Saturday. Anyway, what dates are they? So we can just see and then we can uh, change it and make sure the minutes record the correct okay. date. So again, on um, the Sunday is New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve. I'm sorry, New Year's Day and Christmas Day. Right. So I'm Saturday the 24th and uh, December 24th and sa uh, Saturday, December 31st. Mm -hmm. And the city, may, because, you know, that's up to us because we, you know, we're, the city's closed on Saturdays, but we're not. The city may, you know, close early on Friday. I haven't gotten word yet, but they may, you know, decide to close early on Friday. But my ask is for the um, Christmas Eve and, and New Year's Eve, Saturday. Historically, have we done that in the past? I'm not sure if we've ever yes. had it on this. I, side I of think that. we have, yes, but yes, I, we I have. just it's for more for I, the record. I can, I, yes, we have. I've been on a board, so yes, they have we've yes. always let them have those time off. And I agree with that. I think they should be given the time off. They work hard all year. They should be giving that. So I agree with giving that. Okay, would someone like to make a motion? I make a motion to- Yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Janie, sorry. 
No, I said I make a motion to uh, to authorize the have Friday that Friday those two Fridays or Saturdays Saturday, Saturdays 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 off for New Year's and for Christmas. And that would be December twenty fourth and December thirty first. Right. Second. Second. Can I second? Yep. There's no second. Uh, I'm happy to second it. <laughs> or uh, Ralph uh, seconds. Okay. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. I'm sure the staff will be very, very pleased. Okay. So, um, so a little earlier this evening, I sent out a memo um, outlining a plan, a proposed plan for dealing with the efficiency report, um, the board section, especially around governance. Um, I would like to um, acknowledge Alex because I, his, his report was really the starting point of my report. <laughs> um, some, um, so I don't know how many of you have had a chance to read that. I have not. I have not either. Alex, Ralph, have either of you had a chance yeah, to read? I, it? No, I yes, I, I read it. Okay. Um, so I guess you know at this point, I mean, I, I realize that it was sent late, um, and we could either, you know, Alex, if you want to provide some comment, if you have any comments. Or we could do this. I mean, I could, um, we could, you know, speak, so, you know, individually about about it if you have any feedback. But I guess the main thing is that um, we would need to form a subcommittee um, to address address um, address the things outlined in the report, at least for the first part. Um, and I don't, and since a few of you haven't read it yet, um, you know, it's probably a lot to ask right now for people to commit to it. So, um, so maybe you could email me and let me know if you would be interested. We will, um, I think that the plan would be to, um, spend some time in our full meetings talking about it in November, December, January. I'm hoping that you know we'll have some kind of report ready for for the city, um, you know, in the first quarter of um, 2023. So, well, Morning, my only question about what you sent out was uh, it seems to be kind of a rather long, drawn out in terms of the time. Of three to four, three to four months, when we you know we've had the report, we've had some discussion, we've got Sherelle's report. It just seems like quite a a long time to. Uh, give yeah, our and we're really I mean, just I was just trying to be kind of realistic because I know like the holiday time becomes a time when it's very hard to get together. I mean, I'm you know I'm open, so I was just trying to be cognizant of the collect the collective group, you know, in terms of setting up meetings, hearing back from people. Um, so if we if we wanted to kind of wrap this up by the end of the year and the committee members were um, were open to that, I mean, I'm I'm all for that. I just was trying to be, I guess. Um, you know, not you know, just mindful, and I and like I said, I'm I'm very um, open to you know shortening it by a month at least. So, um, so maybe I if if it's okay, um, within the next week, I'll try and reach out to like everyone on the board to see if if you know, the more the merrier on the committee. The only thing I ask is that we really, you know, get to work um, and, you know, meet um, and 
you know, do the do the research or the reaching out to the key players um, that we need to do and, um, you know, write the report. And like I said, we'll, you know, at each of the board meetings, we'll apprise the entire board of where we are and have make room for discussion um, so that it really reflects our collective, our collective thinking. So I think it's super important, you know, the more I go back and read the state statute and the city code and the efficiency report, of, you know, I've read them many times, there's so much, there's a lot of lack of clarity around governance. And, um, and, you know, the processes around, um, you know, the key issues that I laid out. So, um, so is that, does that sound like a plan? I'll try and reach out to you by phone and, and hopefully, you know, within a couple of days and if you could read it by then, then um, we can talk a little bit more and um, please, please consider joining the committee. I think this is really crucial uh, crucial foundational work, and especially those of you who have been on the board for a while and have had um, experience, you know, experience under different, um, you know, directors and board chairs, and um, mm -hmm. we want we want your experience. So. Okay. And then finally, the walkthrough is the 29th. I'm hoping, is, is everybody planning to attend? There will be coffee and breakfast. And, um, and I think it will be time well spent. And, and really Maria, just, just, yeah, before we close, just for the record, I don't think you asked for public comments in the beginning. Oh, and thank you. I didn't. Do that, to, yeah, to make sure no one's wait, been waiting to make a public Statement. Okay. Is there anyone here who would like to make a public statement? And my apologies for not doing that earlier in the meeting. So um, I I talked to Patsy about this already. Um, I'm actually have been sitting in my son's school handling this meeting because uh, I have in um, he he is part of a, a program going on in the school's auditorium right now and. I would like to participate in that. Um, so, but the only, so there's a foundation meeting, which I don't think there is a quorum if I leave. I didn't anticipate that. So, I well, mean, we can, we can open it. And if there's no quorum, then we close it. Yeah, that's not, that's, there's nothing crucial on the agenda. No, except that Alex should give an update on the aquarium because I think that is moving moving ahead. Well, there's no news for this meeting other than that we just got day before yesterday uh, some final quotes on the cost of things, so we hope to have it on the uh, November agenda. So I will open the meeting and we'll, we'll you know, we'll see if we have a quorum. And well, we have to not, get off this soon. I know, I know. Yeah. I, I know that. I'm just saying yeah, that. On the other plan. Well, thank time. you all very much. And, um, and thank you for, you know, um, you know, for Pat, to Patsy for taking over the meeting. Thanks. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, Mona. You too. Bye, Bye. Mona. Have a good Did they adjourn? I didn't hear a motion to adjourn. Okay.